All right, welcome to the final chapter on authenticity. Uh, I've got some cool questions to ask for today, um, but I am feeling a lot of emotions of inferiority coming up at me. So we'll see how it goes. And then the computer is also kind of slow. Um, lots of um, blocks being experienced today. So we'll just see. So out of rebellion, I got extra dress job. <laughs> I'm feeling really terrible. So I'm gonna make a little extra effort somewhere else. Um, so to wrap it up, I was thinking from what I've been experiencing this past week, which has been very, very challenging. I was thinking about how to be able to respond to my hurt self, to my real self. You know, when you're emotionally honest, you get to experience who you really are, which is the person that has been damaged by others, and also the person that has damaged others, you know, injuries and pain and emotional addiction. That's also the hurt self. So I've been thinking about how I've been slowly trained in evolving certain qualities I have as part of my nature to respond and love and care for that hurt self. And so that made me wonder if maybe what's being developed in me is actually my own nature as a healer. And so maybe this is what happens to everyone. Maybe there's a part of your own true nature that is the healer that is at some point encouraged to awaken so that you can respond to your own hurt self and care for your own hurt child, hurt child, hurt self. So I'm curious to ask that question today, to ask if what is my own authentic healer that could awaken and care for myself. I think because part of healing the hurt self is part of my big passion that over time I'm gonna be hoping to learn more and maybe share what I'm learning as we go. Um, so that's was some part of what I've been thinking about um, to start. And then some of you have shared some of your questions so that could really help us all. So, Let's see. Okay, so the first question I'm thinking we could ask is, what is the difference between authentic emotion and manufactured emotion? Because that's what we are taught we should feel. What is the difference between authentic emotion and manufactured emotion? Because that is what we think we should feel? Ask the question and then see if you can get an answer to help you feel what's the difference emotionally. So next time you can feel like, am I feeling something that I should be feeling to, ple to please somebody else, but it's not my own authentic emotion and what is my authentic emotion? Is that good? All right, who would like to start sharing what they got? Casey, I can see you making a brave breath, like I'm going to be brave. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I actually, uh, I had to rephrase it for myself. Um, yeah. So I did, okay. how can I tell the difference between yes. my authentic self and emotions and my um, manufactured emotions? Nice. That's really, yeah, that's really good. And... <laughs> um, I immediately felt the manufactured first. Um, and I'm not surprised by this, but I, I, I don't really want to engage in it right now. Um, there's always an underlying anxiety. Oh, uh, anxiety. I'm like going to be found out that it's not real. Um, I also sometimes feel frozen. I seek comfort. I engage, obviously in comfort addiction, I engage in neediness. I want to be with others. I want to be around others. Mm. And then, um, when I started to feel about the authentic emo emotions, I don't want to be around anybody. Yeah. I want to be in my own space. I want to feel what it is that I'm feeling. I don't care what other people think about me having the emotion. I don't care about people's opinions, like nothing. I just want to be in my little box, mm -hmm. having that emotion and getting it out till it's done. Very nice. That's a really good distinction. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Steph? 
a um, little bit similar to Casey's. Um, when I'm feeling my my authentic emotion, um, my soul becomes in like when I'm feeling it in my soul, my mind becomes instantly clear, like yes. a fog is lifting. Yeah. And then when I'm manufacturing that emotion, my mind is foggy and really confused. So when I'm f- like, and then I got that visceral sensation yeah. from my, my guides just to really like help me understand like what, it, what's going on. And it's kind of, like, for me, when I'm in that authentic moment, it's like my nerve endings are starting to connect and be fired up. And like, I, you know, you start to feel things move in your, in my body which I thought was really cool. And there's almost like a nervous anxiety happening in my stomach area while I'm doing it because I'm I'm terrified to feel my real feelings um, for likely a whole host of reasons. Yeah. Um, But I feel really calm in my mind while I was there, even though that anxiety was present. Yeah. Um, And that pain and terror start coming forward. And then at the end, it was just like, I instantly will know when it's manufactured as I disconnect from my body. Ah, so there's a visceral sensation. Okay. Yeah, like that visceral like atonement okay. to that real and unreal. It was very cool. Okay, nice, good clue. Sashana. Yeah, so similarities to, to what others have shared yeah. that, um, one thing is that I may not know the language or the name of the emotion that I am feeling when it's authentic. Okay. I, I may not know the label, for instance. And then I, I, I got an image um, that, yeah, something will come up in the body, either a pang in the heart whether it's joy or sadness, or there will be tears, something physical is going to come. But there's a sense of being carefree, um, that I don't really care what others are. I'm not aware. I'm not aware of how others are responding, or I'm not looking to um, see. I'm not concerned with what their perceptions are. And, and the feeling is almost automatic. It, it can't be bottled. It just comes. It's really heartfelt. Wow. Whereas when it's manufactured, I am um, thinking, oh, is this appropriate? And oh. um, looking to see the visual response of others or the even the nonverbal language of others, yeah. it comes from my thinking mind yes monitoring the responses of others and i have to evoke it more than it's not a real feeling it's almost like uh, i got the image of being a puppet on a string yeah like i should be feeling this emotion now okay i'll do it wow nice so you can really feel the difference yeah that's good yeah thank you Okay, did everyone get very kind of clear differences? Like it's it's unique, I'm seeing a uniqueness, a slight differentiation among everyone. Um, Alicia? You mute? Well, I, I was immediately taken to a place that I used to guide tour groups to actually years ago in Greece. It was like a healing hospital place. Oh, well, it was just the ancient ruin. It wasn't the actual thing. And, um, and, and this is what I got. Um, the, difference is, the difference is like heaven and earth is what I got. One is of the lower stages of development. The other, uh, I shouldn't read things because I can't really read it. <laughs> uh, the, it was like the other was like the maturing development okay so when i'm inauthentic or it's manufactured it, it's just it was like in the image that i was shown was like i was in that lower stages of this hospital okay. and, and i was basically having the usual treatment and as i developed and got better became more authentic in feeling my emotions it was like i was taken to the next 
level or the next um, floor of the hospital. Oh, okay, wow. So, um, uh, well, I won't go on, but it was like aspiring development and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, that was... That was well, I'm, I'm really curious, as you continue to develop that image, how that will enrich, you know, you'll have more concept of what you what you got there, more understanding. It's like yeah, a, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big image and yeah. remembrance of the experiences that I had at that place. Yeah. So it's good, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Be very, uh, I'm very curious to, to hear more about what you got there as you continue to develop that mm -hmm. the idea that you just received think about it more and write about it more and yeah and also I'll, I'll listen back to this because I can see that I just sort of listened and I didn't really listen to myself I was just like <laughs> listening to what came to me and so I felt like as soon as Casey started speaking I thought Oh yeah, I need to look at this a bit more deeply in myself rather than just listen out there. <laughs> oh, nice, thank you. Okay, so I also got uh, something similar, which was that um, when I'm authentic, I'm very internal and alone and nobody else is involved. And then when I'm not authentic, when I'm manufacturing, then I am, the outcome is determined by somebody else's response to me. And I feel that I need to engage somebody. I need to take action, I need to say something. And then the outcome is determined by somebody else and it feels like I'm giving my power away. It feels disempowering. But when it's authentic, I feel like I can't take any action until this is done. Nothing is to be done or said until the emotion is churned through and finished through. So it was really, it was really nice to feel the internal and the external variation. So everyone have a a felt sense of what it feels like from now on. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Yeah. So, have I suppressed authentic emotions due to beliefs that some emotions are not nice or sacred? And can I have an example? Have I suppressed authentic emotions due to beliefs that the emotion is not nice or sacred or allowed or appropriate? And can I have an example? Do I need to repeat? Have I suppressed authentic emotions? Probably yes. Due to beliefs that the emotion is not nice or sacred or appropriate? And can I have an example? All right, let's continue on. I am really surprised by my answer. No, yeah, didn't see that coming. Or, or rather it deepened my current understanding of some issues. So it was great. Um, who wants to share? Who wants to say? How bad were your answers? Oh my God, what happened? Alicia? Oh, you mute. Basically I got yes, 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 many times. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay. surprisingly to me, an, um, a remembrance came of a time when, I, I used to lead tour groups, so it was a time when I was uh, leading a tour group and it seemed usually it was like one or two was sometimes difficult out of maybe 40 or 50. This time it was like there were two nice people and the rest were really challenging. Okay. And I could not get it. And then 9-11 uh, happened. Okay. And, uh, and it was like it was like they had to blame somebody so they blamed me because i was the leader <laughs> person so i felt i was blamed and i felt like a part of it was like my, what what have i done <laughs> to create this <laughs> um even though it's way beyond me of course and um and uh and i remember because i was w working and they were clients it was like I, I was treading on eggshells knowing how to 
what to say, what I was allowed to say, what I wasn't allowed to say, but I was actually uh, really angry. I felt really hurt and blamed, unjustly treated. Yeah. And, um, but anyway, somehow God took care of everybody and, um, and they came around to a certain extent to not not blame me and realize it was a big big story going on out there in the world yeah, yeah. yeah. so but yes basically the answer is yes okay <laughs> and, so the answer the example they gave was that that situation where you could not be authentic about how you were really feeling and yeah. therefore you could not be authentic yeah well i could have been but i thought that i couldn't be yeah yeah okay Oh, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Others? Steph. Um, I had to take a second to, while um, Alicia was sharing, to let mine settle for a, a moment. <laughs> um, it, it ended up being my guides just writing through me. Um, Cause they were, they were just chuckling. Um, this falls into the arena of what I believe I should be expressing in a situation, which means I don't honor what I want to be expressing. Okay. Um, and then I, I started with, I have many examples of this. And then they, my guide came in where they're like, yes, you have dear sisters that have confronted you for not being honest emotionally in those moments. The truth is, is that your real emotions, harmonious or disharmonious in God's view, are sacred to that moment and are completely appropriate wow. as to what they need to be felt at this time. Okay. Okay. I got that sense about like some of the underlying belief systems that were driving yeah. this. And it's like caring what other people think about my emotional telling of a story. Yeah. Like it's taken that addiction for approval to like a whole new level because I'm telling a story in a way where I don't want to emotionally appear a certain way. It's so very wild. That's really, yeah, it's kind of a confronting answer, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. Um, Selena. Um, Yes, I've definitely um, suppressed emotions, um, uh, believing that the emotion is goes goes against God's wishes. That um, I've done something that's actually gone against, like knowingly gone against God's laws, knowingly, knowingly, and then not wanting to feel that feeling of how unacceptable that is. Yeah. to me like how I I've just like I don't I can't look at that because I knowingly sinned against God and and if I felt better about it then that then I wouldn't be punished anymore because obviously God can't punish me <laughs> well enough for this yeah, okay yeah. okay yeah so, so what is the authentic emotion you are suppressing in that moment the authentic emotion uh, uh but you still have permission to feel about it even though yeah just permission like i can actually give myself permission yeah. to yeah 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 okay yeah and, and that because you've been forgiven anyway god forgives you immediately so yeah, you allow yourself to experience the mm -hmm. forgiveness, even though you should have known better and you did that on purpose. And it's like exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, thank you. We're getting we're getting like this feelings through our questions that helping to pull out some layers here. So it's really kind of which is why we feel like we're kind of trying to weave our way into like what is it we got? We're trying to understand what the feeling is. So it's good, it's good. Some layers are being pulled up. Casey. Um, yeah, this one was a little yucky. Yeah. Uh, I'm still digesting it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I started with this laundry list of like, oh, I wasn't allowed to feel this, I wasn't allowed to feel this, so, so suppressed it, da, 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 da. 
And then I realized that the theme for all of them is basically the belief that I now have bought into created is that I should be using my emotions to make others feel better. So whatever the situation is, my authentic emotions don't matter. I need to fabricate an emotion to make whomever is near me feel better. And the example that I was given, you and I have talked about this in session a lot, is when I was little and I was um, feeling spirits. Yes. And I was told it was all in my head. I'm crazy. I'm, there's nothing there. You're making it up. You're just trying to scare yourself. You're scaring your sister. You're blah, 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 blah. All of those um, statements. And what I, what I started to do out of that was one, I wouldn't share that I was still feeling things. And I would just, um, you know, I'd go to my parents at night and I wouldn't tell them I was scared. I would say that I, I wanted to cuddle or I wanted to, uh, I needed my mummy or I needed my daddy or no. I needed, yeah. Okay. Which is saying a feeling to make the, to make them addictive feelings, to give them addictive feelings. Yeah. Wow. Feels like self-betrayal, doesn't it? And I don't want to feel that right now. So that's why it's feeling icky. Yeah. I'm actually really angry that that's what's coming up. Yeah. Whew. Well, I got that I do it every day due to belief that my emotions are the cause of my problems. I start to have this emotion, this memory of my mom telling me that if I hadn't had that emotion, I wouldn't have caused that problem, that my emotions were the cause of the problem. And so I'm feeling blamed, which is what I've been feeling for two weeks now, that I feel blame. Um, so if I hadn't had certain desires, then I wouldn't have had been a burden. So, you know, kind of like that renunciation, like if only I didn't have desires, then I wouldn't have asked for things and I wouldn't have burdened other people. And also that if I hadn't had anger, then I wouldn't have treated people badly. So my emotions are the cause of my problem. It's kind of, a, I think there's also some Eastern beliefs in there, locked up in there as well, that renunciation thing. Um, so I'm really surprised that I have this feeling instead of me that my emotions are to be blamed for the problems I have today and the problems I've caused others. Whole other layer I didn't know existed. So that's really cool. Whew. Okay, um, let's ask, <laughs> We're going really deep today. Let's ask, and you know what? I'm feeling blamed that I'm making people feel terrible. Right there. I just did it. Just did it. Gonna catch myself. So in that case, let's let's carry on. So what are some of my physical and emotional addictions that stops me from being authentic? We're already digging. Let's go. Another two feet. What are some of my physical or emotional addictions or spiritual addictions that stops me from being authentic? Okay, who wants to go? This has got me really shaking now. <laughs> some fuse got moving. Who wants to go? Shoshana. Well, I, I don't know how to, what to quite make of this, but um, I got an image of myself floating above the clouds. Okay. And uh, above me was darkness, okay. the universe. Um, and I was dressed in a white gown, mm -hmm. just floating there. And then next I'm standing on a cloud, blowing, I don't know, clouds or ethers away. And then I see almost like an S-shaped electric current. And as I look closer, it's a gold S-shaped snake that reaches out and snaps back in. Okay. 
Well, the question was, what are the addictions that are stopping us from being authentic? So if that's the image you got, then I'm gonna say anything that makes you go into imagination or fantasy or dissociation are your addictions. <laughs> okay, now that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My answer was also something very like boom. And I'm like, uh, that's quite a few addictions and that concept and that idea. But it was yeah, so Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, others? Anyone that got like a confusing image like that? Oh, Selena? You are mute. Uh, going into habitual emotions when triggered by certain events that challenge my good girl injuries. Uh, so I, I, I'm addicted to thinking I'm getting somewhere with this habitual emotion, but it's actually mm -hmm. covering my authentic emotion, like mm -hmm. anger. So, yeah. Wow. Emotional so addiction. So you, yeah, you want to like ask, like, what are my habitual emotions? Yeah. Well, I find what I'm doing now is, okay, this event happened, and has this event happened before? And I'll say yes. And have did is this the way you felt before? And you said, oh yeah, probably for about forty years. So that's probably habitual. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if I just keep mm. feeling that, where am I going? Nowhere. I'm just not going anywhere. I, 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 even though it, I can turn, totally rationalize it as the appropriate feeling. Oh, it feels like shame. It feels like, you know, like I, I'm supposed to feel that. Yeah. But, yeah, no. It could be not even the proper label for that. So, because it's so habitual, I, I don't even know anymore what it is. So mm -hmm. it's just, I'm just addicted to it. So what was that thing again you said today that you set an intention, you ask a question that helped you come out of it? Please help me get rid of this feeling or please help me? Oh, yeah. I just pray to to help me with that feeling. Oh, what did I say? I'm really tired. I, it's just hit me like a brick. <laughs> I was, well, I was up mm -hmm. half the night and then I was up at 8 o'clock. You know my day. I had a quite a very full day. Anyway, I'm having trouble thinking at the moment. Yes. Um, so yes so my question is uh when I, when that happens to me is how come i can't remember darm yeah. <laughs> it's like blank move the feeling there was something there was something you yeah said. yeah there's a, a pray a prayer yeah. to um i'll have to get back to you okay no worries I, Number. I need a moment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Alicia. Um, I have an addiction to want everything just to flow easily and not get down to the hard grind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <The> details. <laughs> like I have an inspiration for something and I can start it, but keeping going is not so easy for me. Yeah. Got um, it an addiction to want to be heard and seen and understood yes and so somebody else giving you some kind of an outcome yeah and i get and i um stop doing this. and I, that and that and cleaning and tidying for example or making my food that i do it in a distractive way sometimes i'm i'm there can see that it's good Sometimes, but there's another time when I'm actually just like using it as a distraction yeah. from um, the f from the fears of not being heard, seen, and understood, and fear of failing, and fear of being rejected, and that. So therefore, I don't get on with the things that I know will help me become my authentic self more. Okay. Good one. You're getting a good feeling for it. Um, the answer I got was that um, I have um, got a memory, which was really good, and not a childhood memory. So I got a feeling that I want to avoid chaos in my environment at all costs. I want to avoid people getting angry at all costs. So if people are going to, if people get emotionally overwhelmed, then they're going to get impulsive and do something ridiculous. 
to themselves or me. So that's chaos. So basically any addictions I have in which I am not wanting people to go into chaos, that create chaos out of control, are my addictions that stops me from being authentic because of the amount of terror that it triggers in me. So that was a good one. So I didn't get a an addiction. I just got a, a category of addictions going. Anything you do to avoid creating chaos because people get mostly angry and then they'll do something. They'll create chaos or my blocks. So that was a good one. Now I can start making a list. Um, or I can feel the terror. So maybe just as well stay in the terror and release it because then that's under the addictions anyway. So next question I wanna ask is, in order to respond to all of this, um, in order to respond and now heal all of our broken selves, I believe that we all carry um, healing qualities, our own personalities as a healer. So let's ask, what are some of my healing qualities that I can activate to heal myself? How can I be my own healer? Okay, who wants to share what are some of the healing qualities I have that I can engage to heal myself? What you guys got? Casey. Um, it's chuckling a little uh, because in, I think it was the second question with the emotions that we've suppressed and I talked about fear connecting to spirits. Yes. And one of the answers was listening to my guides and God and allowing myself to actually feel um their responses like really oh. try and build an emotional relationship kind of like a conversation yeah back and forth okay yeah wow yeah that's really cool thank you and you know you don't have to stop at one you can keep asking and keep getting more and more answers uh who else come on don't be afraid, Sashana. Thank you. I did both questions. So for the first question about my healing qualities, I got a bit of a, again, a curious answer. Okay. So I got the color pink. Okay. And then I got compassion. Nice. The temperature coolness. Okay feeling into my heart, and then mint leaves. Yeah, actually, this is very calming. There's something very calming about it. Oh, okay. I, I, the nervous system. Ah, uh, okay. Because I was like, how could that be my healing quality, mint leaves? <laughs> but, but look at what it does. It, it, it calms the nervous system without suppressing or sedating. Because it's, okay. cool. it's actually kind of a carminative, but it does a cool stuff down. It's really cool. And and um, uh, combine that with compassion is very invigorating, it's very refreshing. You know, it's not it's not a sedating effect. It's so lovely. When I asked the second question, oh, though that's interesting. Okay, menthol ointment on my heart space. Listen to myself and my body. Okay. Love yourself. Swaddle yourself in, in love. Nice. Swim in the ocean. Stand under the waterfalls. Do the work. Reach for the stars and believe in yourself. Okay. It's, some of them are very clear and there's a little bit of a mishmash, you know? Uh, but thank you for explaining the menthol one. You see, it came up twice. Okay, thank you. Okay, Selena. 
Well, <laughs> what started a process of healing for me was allowing myself to stay in my heart space, like to stay. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I'm caring for others, people that are very vulnerable and weak and fragile and, and they're very dependent on me to care for them in a way that's loving and, and not hurtful in any way. I like have to be very attentive to them, to their fragility. And, and that, bring, that brings a feeling in my heart. It's almost like, like how you feel with a newborn infant, that feeling of they're so fragile and new and so dependent. And so, well, I get that feeling a lot, but with my clients, but I feel that I can also do that for myself, that I am also, oh. I can have that feeling for myself and carry oh. it with me. And that's actually what my guys were telling me to do to get to this place that I was trying to get to is self-forgiveness and, and yes. more healing for myself is to try to stay there as much as I can. Wow. And I can use my will and I know what it feels like. Yes. So use your will and kind of the, a feeling of um, um, that you're worthy to have it. Because I think I was not allowing, even though I knew I could have it, it was like, no, I, I can't allow myself to feel that good yeah. that much because that then I'm not processing bad stuff. Exactly. But I found that what was happening, if I stay there, that bad stuff come, just comes Oh, yeah. the, that they just cut like they're like just the flip side of that in, yeah. of those lovely soft tender emotions anyway so and they're more authentic when I stay in that space I'm not just beating myself up with bad emotions thinking I'm doing something <laughs> what I'm, I'm at the point right now where I'm thinking okay if I'm to process emotions I'm doing healing work And first, I need to create a framework. I need to create an environment in which to allow the emotions to come out. It's not a self-punishment place. It's a healing place, even though I'm feeling emotions that I've caused to others to damage. Um, Like, it's like, wait, this is a hospital. You're in a hospital, Mm -hmm. so the emotions can heal. So what's the framework you're going to create? So that's what I'm going, okay, there needs to be non-judgment. There needs to be a lot of compassion, there needs to be love Mm -hmm. for the sinner, there needs to be, so all this list is building in my head on what does that healing center look like? And only then can you then bring in the person that even though they're a sinner, to then say, now release your pain. Like it's like, mm, there's a certain checklist of a certain hospital in mind in which God then heals the sinner. So, yeah, we, I think we're all getting trained in how to awaken that part to ourselves and respond to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we then go and treat others the same. So that's really cool. Thank you, Selena. And it's like maybe in an environment of love and, and compassion, we heal faster, if at all. Like, we're probably not healing at all in the other environment. So, yeah, plot twist. <laughs> Um, So what I got was, um, when I get, um, every now and then I get into this place where I go, okay, that's enough of that. Uh, I have a hurt self that is suffering in this particular condition. Enough of that, she needs to heal. Come on, let's go. This needs to happen. So I get very decisive and I get very like charged of like, I've had enough of this. She's had enough of this. This ends now which astrologically speaking is all of that Pluto energy I have when it goes to the good side. Um, So that was one answer. And then I ask another one. The other one is that when I'm willing to start talking to God about it, when I start to go, okay, God, here's what I'm at. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what it's like. What am I supposed to do with this? What do I do with this? Turns out when I'm engaging that process, that's healing. And that's a healing quality. So I was surprised by my answer, but cool. And then they say, when you engage it, when you engage it, then healing can happen. So I like that little dig I got there. When you engage that conversation with God. So that was kind of cool. Um, Selena. Uh, it just occurred to me to add to that. Often what I also feel what I'm feeling for these people, these fragile people is what an honor it is to care for them and and to do that for myself as well. Like uh, you're caring for this 
broken, fragile person, you know, and this is an honor and a privilege to do so. It's because I, I feel that way all the time and feel those things for yourself. It's a bit of a switch, but, Absolutely. but I do feel those things, you know, that you're giving me your vulnerable, old, fragile body to care for. And I honor and respect not just, yeah, honor. I honor. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. And yeah. all of itself, because it doesn't matter if I'm a 60 year old cranky old person that's out there treating people badly. Yeah. Originally, it started as a broken child. Mm-hmm. Originally. Yeah. So for me, when I think of the hurt self as children, I am, you know, all of my defenses are gone. It's like, oh, this is a kid. This is a kid. This yeah. I'm going to care for it. So if you see yourself that way, yeah, it's tender hearted to be very tender hearted towards that injured person. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think only then do we actually start healing the hurt self. Mm-hmm. Until then, we're just abusing the injured self. Yeah. So happening. I think only then, because I yeah. feel like God is that particular in creating that space of mercy in which and healing in which. The space is finally good enough for her children to release their pain. I think I'm just kind of guessing God's nature here. Probably how important that is. Thank you, Alicia. Yeah, as Selena was saying, um, it's interesting to look at what you say or feel that you can do for others. Yeah. How much am I doing that for myself? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, that's in super important. And um, I got, while all of you have been talking, I got to really be more aware of all the small things instead of waiting until it becomes a big thing. <laughs> um, although when it's become a big thing, I have had that feeling, as you said, like, okay, I can heal from this. <laughs> I can definitely do this. <laughs> and, uh, what answers did you get? Um, so about compassion, empathy, uh, strangely that, uh, I tend to think more laterally than linearly and somehow that thinking or awareness in that way, I could see things about, uh, people's situations that would be obvious to them. And, um, and definitely as Casey said, connecting to guides and, um, it's almost like trusting that they are, it's almost like trusting that, yes, you are you are doing the healing, but at the same time, as soon as you open up that channel, they can help you. They can help you with yourself and therefore with others as well. Okay. And more, to be more aware of that. To be more aware of seeking and allowing help? Yeah. Okay. And also to allow your unique perspective to chime in and help you to see the situation better. Is that? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. To see more. Yeah. It was a, there was a big thing about being able to see more clearly and um, outside perspective. Yeah. Sometimes I can't physically see as clearly. So that was a really big thing for me. So. And um And yeah, I think that was that was more or less it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's ask the question. What does, now you can use your own word here, what does authentic sexuality or empowerment or what feels like for me? <laughs> you can choose the word you want. So you can sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. What does authentic sexuality or empowerment or what feels like? Or if there's something else you want, abundance, what does authentic prosperity feels like? It could be any other kind of, what does authentic um, energy, vitality feels like? You can use any word. Okay, final question. What does authentic empowerment, sexuality, work, or vitality, um, abundance, what does that feel like? So what did you guys ask if you feel like sharing? 
which one did you ask in which gallery if you ask for more than one or two? Um, Casey. Um, I just kind of lumped them all together. Oh, sweet. Um, just because I feel like for me anyways, I feel like if I'm being fully authentic, I'm going to be me in every nice. Situation. So I just wanted to receive what that feeling was like. That's great. And, um, the visual that I got was, I was about two, I think, um, in our backyard, in the long grass with a caterpillar. Oh yeah. And it was like a zoom on a camera lens. Like I just, like, and I was with the caterpillar, only the caterpillar, nothing else mattered. Wow. Curious. And I had all these like feelings and just being with this caterpillar. And then I was reminded that I do that with children, oh. that that's how I am with a child that I just like, all of my attention is there on them. And, and I just want to be with them. Yeah. And so I'm not sure what how to explain it is for the feeling but there's this like um i don't know whole body whole self engagement yeah, yeah nice yeah. yeah that's a fun one to play with then you can go hmm, if i were to do that in my work if i were to do that in terms of energy if i'm to do that with myself yes, yes. <laughs> while i'm cooking and Oh, this I can actually go. Oh, well, yeah, Casey does do that. Yeah, I have seen you maybe turn going. That is what you're doing. That's really cool. Okay, now I know to look up for it. Thank you, uh, Selena. Uh, well, I had authentic empowerment and authentic growth was what came up for me. Uh, so authentic empowerment lately means to me to being. To, 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 to be able to say no without any residual feelings of convincing myself I was right to say no. Okay. And and not feeling resentment towards the asker for yeah. asking a question I said no to. Okay. Like they should know better than to ask me that question. Yeah. That right. I have to say, I, yeah, they should know better. <laughs> well, then now I have to feel the discomfort that I had to say no, and now I have to make them feel better. Yeah, now I resent them because now I have to feel this feeling because they have to ask me that question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and authentic worth yeah. um, that I can allow myself to feel as much love from myself for myself, from Ooh. my guides, and from God as I'm able. That's, it's okay to use my will to feel love from these sources Wow! that I don't have to just kind of wait, you know, Wow! to open like, you know, okay, if you're going to force me to feel your love, like almost that kind of feeling, like I can actually use my will to open myself to it if it's, wow. and then if, if that, if I'm not able to feel it, then I, then I can feel it's blocking it. Right. But use my will to desire it. And that, that cultivates uh, what for you? That's yeah. Or it, it, it increases your feeling of what? Mm -hmm. as well. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Alicia. Well, on reflection, um, everything that came up for me, and I also lumped them like Casey, um, I can see that obviously I'm not in that place a lot of the time, but, <laughs> yeah. but what came up for me is immediately I felt alive and I felt I could surrender um, and I just felt free. And like, I was on this like straight path. Okay. <laughs> I was clear. Yeah. I felt comfortable in my own skin or my soul rather. Um, and I had no qualms about what anybody else's opinion uh, was or judgments or whatever. Yes. I felt very connected and um, I felt like I could I would be singing from the top of hills and diving <laughs> deep and like a dolphin spinning out of the water, well, all those things, but I'm definitely not there very much. <laughs> you know what it feels like? It's like, wow, how do I, how do I go into that? How do I tap into that? Yeah. 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 You can even stop what you're doing in the middle of the day and go, if I were to feel that right now, what would I be doing and how would I be doing it? Good idea. Oh. 
Yeah. I've, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> you have a timer on your on your phones, like every two hours. Did, 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 did. Are you feeling authentic right now? <laughs> Are you in the zone? <laughs> like, hmm, what should I do? Should I do the boogie? Should I? <laughs> What's it going to take to bring me to that place? That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Steph. Um, I got a really interesting glimpse of just God's love entering my soul. And it was just really overwhelming. And then I was able to hold on to the moment enough to kind of feel the after effects of okay. that that like energized like recharge nice yeah. where it was like I was just plugged in and like instantly my battery was full again wow. um and then I kind of got that knowing of I would feel less exhausted and this very interesting possibility that I would never feel exhausted ever again Oof. how is that how is that like you'll rest, but you'll enjoy it because it's nice to rest. And yeah, like what is that like? You know, um, and and just feeling that whole and completeness in myself, and that I'll have like that supported confidence and trust. And I, yeah, it just it was really beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I asked the questions separately, so what I got was for. Uh, sexuality, authentic sexuality is when I feel good about myself and love how I feel in my body. That's what that feels for me. Empowerment is when I, well, I also, when I can feel that I also have worth and I can also ask for what I want. That creates empowerment for me. And worth, I get authentic, the feeling authentic worth for me is when I can see the world that God has designed for people, for us, the, the care that God has put into our care, which then make me trust God. When I feel like, oh, look at what God has done. You know, I trust this God. When I feel that, I start to feel what? So that seems, which is why I'm always being encouraged to look at the world God has created, see God's creation. Because over time, I'm beginning to trust God more. And I don't realize that somehow that is tying in into an increased feeling of worth in me. So I definitely want to go for that more. Because I feel like what I'm learning is that the more we can feel our own innate worth, the less we're in addictions. We're just looking for worth. And the more we feel our own worth, um, the less as most of you are feeling, the less we're concerned about outside validation and which are basically all addictions and you are in an empowered state so that's uh, really cool a lot of these answers are kind of feeding back into each other just making me see oh this is why i'm having all these experiences in my current life right now and i'm encouraged to do certain things just didn't realize that you know like trusting god's laws creates a feeling of worth in me like i didn't see that connection before so it's kind of cool well, well, it has been five weeks of uh, my whole life has changed in these five weeks. Holy smokes. Uh, very, very frightening, but also very quickly seeing some positive changes in my law of attraction. So it's been pretty profound. So thank you for being on this journey and creating some very good content that we can all share in. And, you know, for yourself, come back and watch this three to six months from now, come back and do the questions again. I've gone back and watched a lot of those COVID times <laughs> workshops and redo the workshops. Uh, they become a resource of comfort and, and growth for you guys. So thank you so much for contributing to these workshops. Thank you.